Welcome everybody. Today, uh, Jennifer Vashor is giving this webinar on games for young learners. I would really like to thank Shelley for this amazing opportunity and hope you and wish you a very safe uh, trip. And today, my purpose is to show you a new way to motivate your students. I am an EFL teacher from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I work at a bilingual school, and I have a new position at school where I kill two birds with one stone because I teach not only English, but I also teach technology. I am lucky enough to have a whole computer lab available where my students can come in and play several games. Now, I want to briefly tell you how I introduce games in my uh, teaching scenario. What I do is, uh, there is a traditional teacher, most of my students, uh, they have classes with their regular teacher. And what I do, I try to enrich the curriculum, adding different Web 2.0 tools. And obviously, most of these tools are game-based uh, tools. As we all know, games are enjoyable. And when I see my students playing with games, uh, this means that they also refer to rules, and they have to follow these rules. Games, what they do in general, and I teach the whole school from kindergarten up to middle school, and basically today I'm going to focus on the different games that I use with young learners. They foster cooperation, but I think this is really very important. And also, um, while they learn how to work in pairs. Really, the learning itself is really fun for my students. Now, in general, I, th the big question I ask myself is, which game to use? So first, I have to decide the purpose of the game. The teacher tells me which is the syllabus that they're working with. And then I try to find a suitable game for the learning objectives that the teacher has. I consider the language level of the game. Because obviously the games that a kindergarten will play will definitely not be the same as the ones that fifth or sixth grade will play, and the time, the material, and the time available for a game. Please, if you have any questions, please use the chat. So this is the way I start. I always start by telling my students how to be safe online, and the way I teach my students online safety is through games. I found that the learningenglishkids.britishcouncil.org website is just an amazing website where you will find not only very good games, but also there is a whole section on how to be safe online. I would like to share with you, because I would, I would like you to copy all the different links. Um, here in the chat, what I'm, I'm going to, this, I created a web list where you will have access to all the different links that I am sharing with you today. So please, uh, I'm sorry that Shelley's name appears. OK, hello, Alejandra, how are you? Um, so please, uh, you've got all the, all the links there. So I highly recommend teachers to start by showing your students how to be safe online using this game. This is a very nice game, for, for example, from the British Council website that um, for example, here in Argentina, most of the students, uh, the young learners, really, they spend uh, more, in average, according to several researches, they spend 80% of the children navigate alone online. So as a teacher, we have to be very aware of this. And in this case, in this game, this girl is navigating alone, and she clicked on something that she shouldn't, and then suddenly a dinosaur appeared. and it clearly explains all the different uh, types of uh, uh, problems a child can have if they are left alone navigating online. Now, what I always try to do is that I always try to bring real life situations. Have you ever seen this website? This is the official website of uh, the Olympics mascots. And my students have been playing with this website, and they really enjoy it. Why? Because they have the possibility of not only 
making their own mascots, watching several uh, videos, playing games, and also exploring the different possibilities that they have while learning different things about the Olympics. Um, in, here in this website, you can see that we've got Weblog and we've got Manville. Um, and if you have any idea what the, both of them represent, do you know why you've been using the Weblog um, mascot and why there is a Manville uh, mascot? Any idea? You can use the chat if you want. If you don't, it's OK. So what I do is um, I make my students create a mascot um, while they create this game. You don't. OK, let me go uh, backwards. And really, this is very good, because then when uh, in July, the 26th of July, the Olympics start, they know already some information thanks to this game. Uh, the Wenlock mascot really refers to Olympics. This is the Olympic mascot. And the Mandville one is of the Paralympics game. So they're very, very nice. And the games are really amazing. But as every single tool that we use in the classroom, they all have an advantage and a disadvantage. Okay, And teachers cannot underestimate never the pedagogical value, both in the teaching and the learning of a foreign language when we introduce games. Now, for example, my students love creating. In this case, you can see that they created their own mascot. As you can see, once they create their mascot, and this is the disadvantage that I found from uh, this website, is that your students, they must have an email account to create their mascot. In this case, as you can see, this is an, uh, an Argentinian mascot. That, and uh, uh, you can, your students can start comparing the different mascots that you find okay, in all this enormous gallery. Now, besides being a language class, if you click on every single mascot, there's going to be a flag of the country that has created the mascot. So uh, my piece of advice, just have quite handy a world uh, flag map with everything that, that you know what each uh, flag represents. Now, these are some of the classroom ideas that I would like to share with you. For example, the first thing that they do is to make and describe their own mascot. What I have out, found out basically with the young learners, when they create their own, in this case, it's like this is a mascot, or when they create their own avatar, really it's amazing. In the moment they have to describe them, their description is much better than if they're using a description that comes directly from the book. Now, all this will definitely spark class conversations. Because before introducing this game, you have to introduce the concept of what's happening in the UK in July, the 27th of July, for them to be aware of a real situation that is going to happen worldwide. They will definitely learn about the Olympics and uh, the different also places where the Olympics is going to take place. Because while they watch the videos, you're going to see that it's very, very interesting. And when they explore, um, the different types of mascots, they will realize how many different countries are participating. And if they click where it says play, then here they will learn about all the different games that um, all the different athletes will participate. And then obviously I, what is really very interesting is to integrate the use of images and videos into the classroom. So I highly uh, recommend you to start uh, using this uh, very nice and simple website with your young learners. Another tool that uh, this is really all the ones that I, all the tools that I'm sharing you today, these are the ones that my students here in Argentina, these are the ones that they really uh, play regularly. I have an online space where there are a lot of different games. Most of them are educational games. And today my purpose is to share with you the ones that they play the most. This is a very nice uh, website that is Collect Cool Words. What they do is your students, they have to click here on uh, the skateboard. They have to collect the words. And uh, for example, you can see here the button says pie. So you, the young learners, they have to master very well the arrow keys, up and down and sideways arrow keys. And they, they, have, to, they have to create the word that appears here. When they are able to create this word, um, they collect 
a cool word thing and they go collecting all the diff different objects. For example, if it's a pie, today we work with this in class, and for example, uh, there was a tie, then it was a house, and there were all different objects. And then after this, what they did, I integrate several other Web 2.0 tools. For example, they had to, in a wall wisher, they had to write down all the new words that they learned thanks to uh, playing this game. Another of my young learners' favorite website is Word Safari. Have you ever heard about this game before, Word Safari? No? OK. What do they do here in Word Safari? This is quite similar to the other one, because what your students need uh, to master is the up and down arrow. Again, they're not using uh, the mouse. This is something important when you're working with young learners. Is that you can create your own word safari. There is a bank word where in, when you enter the website, automatically different words will appear. But I love to use this website, and I help teachers when they want to reinforce vocabulary. So I write down, you have the option of uh, creating your own words, and these words you can use, you can choose different options. It could be an easy, it could be a medium, or it could be a hard word. And you can add up to 10 different words. And even you can use this as an extra class activity for them to continue learning in a very, very a nice way, this idea of um, vocabulary. Now, this is another very nice uh, game that you need, in this case, really what you need, you need to have a very good computer to work with this game because you need a lot of flash. What I found out while I was using this one, at least here in Argentina, is that when you have all the computers connected, maybe everything slows down. Now, this is a wonderful website to help them uh, with their speaking activities. Why? Your students can monk themselves. What does it mean? They can create their own avatars. And while they are creating their own avatars, they you will uh, review uh, different uh, clothes. And uh, also, then at the end, they can record their voices, or they can add a text message. And the way I use this website with my students is, in general, to review, for example, uh, a book that they have read with their teacher. And just in one or two lines, because in the text uh, message that uh, this website provides, you are not able to write a lot of words. So in the traditional classroom, learners, we know that learners become very Asian uh, about being you know, criticized and being punished in the way they speak. Okay, now when we introduce these type of games, what I have found out is that uh, really the this reduces the anxiety in most of the learners, and it really gives them a positive feeling because really they can use their own target language in a totally different way, and not they are not being judged all the time. And what my students really love the most is this idea of becoming autonomous learners. Now another very nice website is. Uh, learningchocolate.com. This is one of uh, this is really not a game website itself, but it's a website that will help our students learn mainly vocabulary. What I like about this website is that if you click on every single um, image that you've got here, you've got the pronunciation, and the website automatically generates a, a match up game, two different match up, three different match up games. Then you have a fill in the blanks. OK? And your learners, really, I put them in pairs, and they start practicing the, the different vocabulary that you, they find here. Here, I'm just giving you an example on how to use uh, uh, animals, how to work with animals. But uh, it's really amazing. You should navigate the whole website, because they give you a lot of different um, opportunities. And there are also some games that you can start using with your students. Now. How many of you have ever used an iPad in, in your classrooms? Okay, This is something very, very new in, in Argentina, really. Um, I think that there are only two schools in all Argentina that the students there is this one laptop per child possibility that they're using um, iPads. What I do in general, um, the school where I work, they have only one iPad. 
And this is a very nice game that I work with them. This is my five-year-old daughter. She loves this game. And this is a free app. Obviously, we, all the apps that I use, they're all free. And it's called Kids Can Spell Animals. Very nice and very engaging. Now, how can we use this tool? This is really a game um, where the students in general, what they, they have to do here is the, the website, the, the game itself teaches them how to start spelling. Yes, in most countries, it's, it's still not, not available. But um, the school is just trying out this idea of using iPads. And the results up to now are really, really amazing. What is very difficult is just to have one iPad for you know, 25 or 30 students, because they become very, very anxious you know, to use it and to learn different things. But in general, the school is using it a lot to record the students and to record different activities that they do in class. Now, this is a very nice uh, website. It's called Doggy Mail and Kitty Mail. Your students, what they have to do here is that they, they have to choose uh, what animal, what pet they, they want to be. And in this pet, they can, they can record their own voices, or they can uh, write a, a text message. Uh, most of the students, what I, what I do with this website, we were doing an international project. And they introduced themselves uh, using this website. And it was really, really interesting to see the difference between the boys and the girls while they were choosing their different doggy and kitty males. One piece of advice when we use these type of games with our young learners is that many times they spend a lot of time looking for like their avatar or the character that they want to work with. What I do is I set a specific amount of time. I tell them, OK, now you've got 10 minutes to choose your doggy and kitty male. And then really, the rest of the class, I have to focus on the pedagogical purpose that I really want to achieve while I am introducing this game in the classroom. Now, this is something that I want to share with you. Um, this is an activity that we did in class where I used a word cloud. I'm sure Shelley spoke a lot about this in this idea of integrating word clouds in the classroom. And I created this word cloud where my students had these words, for example, bathroom, kitchen, uh, you know, sink, shower, et cetera, et cetera. We work with this. Uh, I, I'm really into this idea of using visual literacies in the classroom. I think this is very important nowadays with uh, our learners. I introduced this vocabulary that they have already been working with this where, with their traditional uh, teacher at, in, in the class. And then I used this game that is called PurposeGames.com uh, that you have thousands of really amazing games. Some of them are about countries, uh, some of them parts of the house. You have several, several games that are really, really uh, very, very interesting. And uh, here, as you can see, visually, they play this game. And what my students like a lot about this game is that there is a specific, there's a, it's timed. So what I do is I open this game, and we, they love this idea of playing a, com a competition to see who is the first student to finish uh, this activity. Now, what we, when teachers, we think, OK, when to use a game, because this is also very important. It's not that I'm in the whole class, I'm always introducing games. Because in general, most of the teachers use games, maybe or at the beginning or at the end. But what I try to do is, in my classes, because I, I, I repeat this again, I have the privilege of having a whole computer lab available. And this is not very common. Therefore, what I do is that um, I don't treat games as something like a marginal activity. I never do that with my students. Because I truly believe that the game has to be the central part of, of the classroom and of the teaching uh, purpose that I have in mind. So, and in general, I use the games really to re enhance what they have already learned with their traditional teacher. And this is my, this is my students' favorite game. I don't know if I've ever heard about it. It's Friv. Friv, as you can see here, this is a wall where you have thousands of different games. Now, something interesting that I have found out with my uh, young learners is that, uh, for example, today I had a kinder five, they're five-year-old students, that they don't know how to read and how to write. Now, to be able to play this game, all the instructions are in English. So 
um, this is my target language. Amazingly, without knowing how to read and write, they are, they are able to play the games. And while I'm in the computer lab, what I see is that most of the questions are not based on, Miss, how do I play the game? But most of the questions is, Miss, I lost the page. I don't know where I have to continue. Only that. So Friv is definitely a very, very uh, amazing website for students where they could spend maybe most of the, the whole class working with this website. And now, um, I would like to show you uh, this idea of using virtual worlds for young learners. Any of you, have you ever had any experience using virtual worlds with your young learners? Have you ever used virtual worlds? This is a virtual world that's called Monchi Monsters. This is what my students really enjoy. Um, I learned this website thanks to them. And Mushy Monsters, what it does, this is, Mushy Monsters has really a very uh, high educational value because it's like an adventure for most of my students. Um, the, the children, what they have to do, they have to choose a mem uh, monster and their monster becomes a virtual pet and they have to feed their virtual pet. Now, um, your students must have an, an, an email account to work with this and this is the different way um, how I work with this website in the classroom. I find this website, for example, you can see here this is a map, and this is all of the different places where your monster can go. Now, obviously, before working with this website, your students have uh, to dress the monster, and uh, they can visit these different places, and I use this to teach literacy. So I tell their students, for example, to describe their monster and write about a day in Monstro City. And they love this idea. The, the way they write about Monster City, obviously, is not on a sheet of paper, but I use uh, different online spaces for them to write about it. And then I share this with uh, the parents that they really like to see what their students have been doing. Um, the main purpose of the website, obviously, is that the students, they have to take a look. OK, they have to look after the happiness and well-being of their monster. So uh, this is the only thing that I found like a disadvantage is like, I, first of all, I created my own website. Um, and uh, I, I created, sorry, my own monster. And then the moment I created my own monster, I don't have time to feed my monster all the time. So if you enter like every once a week or twice a week, your monster becomes grumpy. And we don't want a grumpy monster. Therefore, I created a monster for my students. And every time we have a class, we check how is our monster, and we try to feed our monster, because obviously everybody wants a very, very happy monster. Now, this is a very nice idea also, is that within the whole virtual world, your students can design their own house. Now, what I do here is that I compare the different descriptions made by my students. Again, bear in mind that you have to time this activity, because they spend too much time, really, working on okay, what objects they're going to start adding in their own monster house. And then comes the most educational part of uh, this whole virtual world, that you have a whole lot of puzzles. And all these puzzles, they are all educational games. And the, with all these games, your students can learn language, and they can learn math as well. Something else is, the more they play, they, there is like a virtual coin that is called rocks. So the more they play, the more rocks they have, and the more things they can do with their monsters. For example, they can decorate their house in a totally different way if they play these educational games. And then, which are the advantages of using games? Well, they improve hand-eye coordination and help players gain many skills. And they create team players. Our students and more young learners, they really learn how to play, how to uh, work, in, in teams. They teach player pro problem solving, motivation, and cognitive skills. And I would like to round up using this quote for, from Armando Baltra that he says, what makes computer games fun can offer an interesting new light on what will motivate a student to learn. So let's try to use games in the classroom really uh, to present them as a new way, for example, of uh, learning grammar, listening, and speaking skills. So thank you very much for uh, joining me today. If you've got any questions, please uh, use the chat. 
I will once again share with you all these in this link you will find all the different links that I've shared with you today. If you have any questions, please uh, use the chat.